And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Chilesaurus, or Chilesaurus. We had three different ways of saying it. I'll probably say Chilesaurus, revisited, which was a request from Morgan via our Patreon and Discord. So thank you. I think most English speakers would probably say Chilesaurus. Mm, I think you got Chilesaurus in my, <laughs> in my head, so now that seems right. Well, maybe I'll just switch between the two. Mm -hmm. We've talked about Chilesaurus a few times, including 2015 when it was first named. But again, like I said before, new stuff has come out, so it warrants revisiting. It was a dinosaur that lived in the late Jurassic around 150 million years ago in what is now Chile, or Chile, found in the Toki Formation. It looked like other early dinosaurs. It walked on two legs. It had a long tail, a longish neck, and a long body. If you think of like Massospondylus or Eodromaeus. <laughs> yeah, those very well-known dinosaurs. <laughs> I feel like Massospondylus is fairly well-known. Basically like a typical little bipedal dinosaur, but with a slightly longer neck. Mm. And it's estimated to be about 10 and a half feet or 3.2 meters long. It's been called a platypus dinosaur because it had a combination of features seen in theropods, ornithischians, and sauropodomorphs. For example, it had a theropod-like body, but it wasn't that great of a runner based on features in the shin bone and having a broad foot with a weight-bearing first toe. It had stout limb bones like sauropodomorphs and strong arms with a large first claw similar to basal sauropodomorphs. It had grasping hands, three short, thick fingers with two claws, and it was herbivorous. It had spatula-shaped teeth or leaf-shaped teeth. It was also ornithischian-like, with its ornithischian-like or bird-like hips. It had a backward-facing pubic bone, which would give it room for a large gut, and that is good if you're a plant eater, because you got to process all those plants. Mm-hmm. You had a big stomach, a lot of digestive tract. It also had a slender neck and a proportionally small head with a rounded skull, and it probably had a beak. And when you list all those factors together, it definitely sounds like a sauropod, other than the fact that it walked on two legs and it was pretty skinny. And the backward-facing pubic bone. Oh, yeah, that's true. Sauropods didn't have that. Yeah. So. Platypus dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> I like that nickname. This is a, I think we've talked about platypus dinosaurs before, because mm -hmm. a lot of them have strange combinations of features. Yes. Or at least what we think of as strange to a Chilesaurus. It was perfectly normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the type species is Chilesaurus Diego Suarez I. It was named in 2015 by Fernando Novas and others, and the fossils were found in 2004 by Diego Suarez, who he at the time he was seven years old. He was with his geologist parents, Manuel Suarez and Rita de la Cruz, and his sister Macarena, and they were out hiking when he found a vertebra in a rib. That's the dream, right? Yeah. <laughs> Seven-year-old children all around the world are jealous of this kid. <laughs> <laughs> Although not a kid anymore. No. Well into... Their 20s. <laughs> <laughs> and the genus name, Chilesaurus, means Chile or Chile lizard, and it refers to Chile. The country. Yes. And the species name is in honor of Diego. More fossils were reported in 2008. They were thought to be the, quote, first significant remains of carnivorous dinosaurs, end quote, in Chile from the Jurassic because previously they'd only known isolated teeth from the late Cretaceous in that country. Yeah, I mean, that's a good reason to name it after the country. It's expected to be a huge find. Well, they thought it was a carnivorous dinosaur. Yeah, it turned out not to be, most likely. <laughs> Seems to be herbivorous. The holotype's an articulate, pretty complete skeleton of a juvenile. It's missing its feet and most of the tail, though. And four other partial skeletons and additional bones of juveniles and adults have been found. The holotype's about 50% the length of the largest individual found, at about 5.2 feet or 1.6 meter long. It's the first complete dinosaur found that lived in the Jurassic, in what is now Chile. 
So it's still got that going for it. Yeah, and that actually, sometimes we lament the place name Saurus, place name Ensis, or place name Saurus, person name Ensis as being sort of a boring dinosaur name. But you can't be wrong. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to come back later and say, no, you didn't find that in Chile. You found that in Argentina <laughs> because yeah. they know where they found it. But they don't know, if, you know, it did change that they thought it was a meat eater and now it's an, a plant eater. But that fortunately didn't name it like big first ever carnivorous meat eater yeah. in Chile. Saurus. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I like that they named it after the seven year old who found it. Yeah, that's very nice. So Novas and others said that, quote, Chilesaurus is a unique dinosaur lineage known only from southern South America, suggesting an outstanding case of endemism among otherwise relatively cosmopolitan worldwide Jurassic dinosaur faunas, end quote. Yeah, sometimes they get isolated and then they just look like nothing else, really. Yes. Originally, Chilesaurus was thought to be a tetanurin theropod. And that's a clade that includes megalosauroids, allosauroids, tyrannosauroids, ornithomimosaurs, compsognathids, and manoraptorans. Quite a diverse group of, is that all carnivores? Mostly carnivores. Yeah. Well, I mean, theropods in general, that's, uh, that's most of the theropods that we know are tetanurin, mm-hmm. the ones that have stiff tails. So, yeah, that's like pretty much all the theropods. Yes. But then, in 2017, Matthew Barron and Paul Barrett found Chilesaurus to be the, quote, earliest diverging member of Ornithischia, end quote. And Chilesaurus was an early Ornithischian after splitting from Ornithoscolida. But that's what they were saying at the time. Yes. That should give you a hint that we don't really think about (laughs) Ornithoscolida anymore. Yep. But Barron and Barrett proposed that Chilesaurus was a missing link between carnivores and early herbivores. And in Ornithoscolida, they grouped together Ornithischians and theropods. But like we said, we don't really talk about Ornithoscolida anymore. And it seems that the latest is more that Silosaurs evolved into Ornithischians. Because the big question is, where did Ornithischians come from? Because... For the, all of the Triassic, we don't have any Ornithischians. Mm-hmm. So this proposal was, well, they came from theropods, basically. And the new proposal is they came from Silosaurus. Yep. So I'm not sure what we consider Chilesaurus, which is why I said it's a dinosaur that lived in the Jurassic. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it's still an Ornithischian? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's a sauropodomorph... That would make it a Sauruskian. Mm. But we didn't actually, you didn't say it was a Sauruskian. You said it had a lot of sauropod features yep. and sauropodomorph features. Right. But it also had theropod and ornithischian features. So, yeah. Is it a theropod that looks like a sauropod or is it a sauropod that looks like a theropod? <laughs> I'm going to leave it up to future papers. Yeah. It did have some interesting features that upended what paleontologists thought when it came to when certain features evolved. Like, Chilesaurus didn't have a predentary bone, that's the bone at the tip of the bottom jaw, which previously everybody thought was a fundamental feature of Ornithischians. It also didn't have teeth in the front of its snout, and it had support for a beak, and that may mean that Ornithischians were already adapted to an omnivore or herbivorous diet before they had the predentary bone. But it did have that backward-facing pubis. So it's possible that that pubis position is related to being an herbivore and related to dinosaurs evolving longer, more complex digestive tracts. Yeah, we've seen that happen with other dinosaurs that evolved herbivory. Like, for example, Therizinosaurus probably had that backwards-facing pubis, even though it was a Sauruskian, so it should have been forward-facing. But we think it shifted over to make more room for those big herbivorous guts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So maybe the same thing happened here with Chilesaurus. Like we mentioned earlier, sauropodomorphs did not have that backward pubis. And according to Baron and Barrett, that quote, may have condemned them to quadrupedality as any expansion of the gut anterior to the hips would have resulted in an anterior shift to the center of mass, end quote. I mostly quoted them because I thought it was interesting how it's like condemned them <laughs> to being four-legged. <laughs> yeah. Like it's basically like, oh, their guts were growing farther and farther forward. And so they couldn't get their hands off the ground. They were stuck yeah. with their hands on the ground forever. <laughs> Although it does seem like other dinosaurs managed to stay bipedal mm-hmm. while and sort of their hips evolving to be backwards facing. But 
not every animal can evolve the same way. So maybe sauropods just couldn't for whatever reason. Yeah. And that's fine by me. I love sauropods being four-legged and giant. Even though they were condemned to <laughs> state. But back to Chilesaurus. In 2017, Nicholas Timento and others studied the forelimb posture of Chilesaurus. All of the skeletons that they studied were found preserved in a way that looks like the resting posture of Maylong and other dinosaurs that look to be resting, like Cyornithoides and Albinicus. The arms are flexed toward the body and the hands are facing backwards. But what's interesting is that with Chilesaurus, the hind limbs are extended out. So it seems like the Chilesaurus individuals were buried quickly and fossilized in a life position while they were eating or resting. They're thinking they probably weren't sleeping because of the hind limbs being extended out. In advanced theropods, it's been suggested that the resting posture of the arms is related to soft tissue structures like the propatagium. That's the largest skin fold of the wing. So there we go. We've managed to get some soft tissue in the dinosaur of the day <laughs> to go with our Beyond Bones soft tissue episode. Yeah, I talked a bunch about the propatagium in an earlier episode when we were talking about wings. Mm -hmm. And basically, yeah, it prevents the arm from straightening all the way. So it could be that the arm is bent because there was some soft tissue holding it there, essentially. Yeah. So with Chilesaurus, having that flexed arm may indirectly indicate that it had a propatagium, which is an important feature for flying. I'm not saying Chilesaurus could fly, but it may have had features early on linked later to flying, just adding to its platypusness. Yeah. <laughs> or it, it had that structure there because it was a good place to display some feathers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there could be a lot of reasons. So that's Chilesaurus and other animals that lived around the same time and place as Chilesaurus include sauropods, like diplodocids, and titanosaurs, and crocodiliforms. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left. <laughs> 